In this video, we're going to go through some of the new updates that came out as part of Power BI's February 2024 updates, including things like the new visual calculations, the co-pilot powered features, as well as the new TMDL formats to save your semantic models. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So the first one that we'll look at is this new visual calculations feature, which is a preview feature that came out this month, and it gives you the ability to write DAX functions on a visual level. So in normal cases, when you write measures to use in your visuals, you would write it uh, and put it in your measures folder in your semantic model, and you'll need to be aware of how your semantic model and how it will react to uh, when it's being put into a visual, which makes it a little bit more complicated than what you would originally thought if you wanted to just, you know, like do some simple calculations like adding or, or multiplying some values that you see in the visuals. Now with this new visual calculations feature, you can do exactly that. You can just refer to the values that you see in your visuals and create calculations based on those values without needing to worry about how it's built on the back end. I think this will be a really handy feature, especially for those users who are not too familiar with the semantic model and you just want a quick and dirty way to calculate something on a visual level. So I'm going to try to cover this in a separate video in the future just to explain to you how it works and you know how you can utilize it. And I'm also going to try to cover in that feature video some of the new functions that came out specifically for the visual calculations. So the running sum, the previous and the moving average. Dynamic subscriptions are not now available in Power BI service, similar to the version that we saw on the paginated reports for the Power BI a few months back. So dynamic subscriptions, from what I understand, is essentially acts like a row level filter to your subscriptions when you set it up to go to your users. So if you're not already familiar with report subscriptions and how they work, I already covered them at least on a very basic level in a previous video. So go check it out if you haven't yet. And basically dynamic subscription is just an extension to that already existing component. The only thing that the blog post doesn't mention is that this is a premium feature. So if you have a pro license, you won't be able to take advantage of the dynamic subscriptions, only the normal subscriptions without these pre filters that you can apply. So just be aware of that if you want to use this. On object interaction now supports bulk updating formatting changes. So previously, when you select multiple visuals, you won't be able to kind of change any values or any properties that are similar across these two visuals, like, for example, like just changing their position or changing their size, whereas you would normally be able to do this in other softwares. So now after this update, you should now be able to change some of the container properties that is shared across these visuals. So here's an example where two visuals are selected and kind of some of their visual properties uh, can be updated across all, both of these visuals when they're selected. Now, from what I can see, this update is only applied to the visual container side of the visuals themselves. So meaning the size and the position of the containers for your visuals. However, I'd like to see this kind of accessibility or this bulk update for formatting properties available for um, similar graphs or similar charts, just because I find myself, for example, wanting to you know change the same property across multiple visuals of the same type of visual without having to redo them one by one. So it would be nice to see this change in the future. The new Power BI home for the Power BI desktop is now enabled by default. Now it's still not out of preview, at least for now. So you can still go back to the previous experience if you wanted to do so. But if you're installing the new version, the February version for the first time, you would see the home default if you haven't turned it on yet. And if you haven't turned it on yet, it's just basically a rehash or a different type of experience when you open Power BI desktop for the first time. So it will give you your, you know, your typical links. And uh, the idea is that it will, or it's meant to look very familiar with how the Power 
Power BI service experience is. So where you will be able to, you know, see the recommended reports that you work on or the most recent ones that you've opened, how to create a new report. So I've been using it for a few months now since it first released and so far I've had no issues with it. So now it will be on by default for you guys. You can now generate measure descriptions using Copilot. So if you update your Power BI desktop into the February version and you go to the model view from the left hand side and click on any of your measures, columns or tables, you will now have this option create with Copilot, which is a button that you can click that will generate a natural language description of what your measure or what your calculation is doing. So when you click this button, it will generate that natural language description. And if you're not happy with that description or you think that is too vague or doesn't uh, hit the mark at all, you have a button to try again, which will regenerate a new description that you can either keep or remove if you wanted to. So one thing to be aware of if you're using uh, this feature and any of the Copilot features in Power BI is that uh, it uses data centers within the US. So what that means is that if you are outside of the US, like me, for example, I'm based in the UK, you will need to explicitly enable your tenants to share your data from wherever region you come from into the US data centers to be processed which is obviously a risk, especially if you're working with sensitive data, your clients might not want to for your data to leave the region where they uh, are working in. So just be aware that if you're using co-pilots, you will need to make sure to enable this setting in your Power BI admin portal for you to be able to take advantage of these features. Storytelling for PowerPoint now adds a tick box that lets you convert the URLs that you paste into a shareable link. So converting your link into a shareable link just basically ensures that when people who already have access to those reports open the PowerPoint, they don't need to ask for access or permission when viewing the presentation itself, which just makes the whole experience a lot easier for your users. The Explore feature came out as a feature sometime last year, and it lets you essentially do some ad hoc exploration of your data. This month, they added something else new here, which is this data overview, which is a uh, a simple kind of overview description generated by Copilot. So I think it's a good way to kickstart your exploration just to give you a gist of kind of what the makeup of your data is before even looking at it. But again, this also uses Copilot features. So just make sure you have that turned on if you want to use that feature. So TMDL or Tabular Model Definition Language is a format that you can now save your Power BI reports into. So last year, they gave us the ability to save our reports into this Power BI project file, which basically lets us you know, create a separation between our model and our reports and uh, gives us the ability to edit these values into like something readable like a JSON type format, which makes it easier for us to do any repositories in the future. So TMDL format seems to be the next level to this where it gives you a proper definition and segregation for all the parts of your semantic model. So it gives you, you know, different structures for different parts of your semantic model. And it should now be available for you to save into TMDL format from this month onward. I believe it's still a preview feature. So if you do want to use it, you just need to make sure you enable it from the preview settings. Lastly, I wanted to cover an update that was not part of the feature summary blog post, but it was also released in February, which I think is a really interesting thing to cover. Just some new ways to visualize your bar charts, which is uh, letting you overlap natively in the charts themselves, which I had covered in the past, but it's more of a hack rather than a kind of solution. But uh, it's good to see that now bar charts or, or just how you present them is becoming more and more uh, expansive. So uh, definitely I'm going to cover how we can review that original solution that I made and how we can take advantage of this new native feature. And that's really it for this update. As usual, I didn't cover everything that was in the blog posts, only the ones that were fairly interesting to me. If you want to read the full feature summary for this month's updates, I will leave a link somewhere in the description box below so you can read it for yourself. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access 
demo files and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.